Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Italy. Welcome to Parma, and welcome to the opening of the new test center in Italy. I'm really delighted to be here with you. I'm uh, as well emotional by the fact that uh, we are running this uh, virtual and as well face-to-face -face event with our customer. I am mean, really happy to have you all here. Why we are opening this new test center? So you will ask, what's the reason, why? So the important point is we are observing and seeing from customer an increased demand of tests. So we see a lot of new requests from the customers as well uh, the increase of high quality of the material and high purity is a request that is coming from the market. Based on this situation and as well based on the 2021-2026 plan, we are going to open this test center as well invest in the flake sorting market. Today will happen that after myself, I will introduce our segment manager for plastic, Alberto, which will give you the picture and the solid information about why the flakes market is important for Tomra. Following by Alessandro, which is our sales manager for Italy, and will give you the picture of the mantra of the technology and why uh, the test center will be the playground for the new application for Tomra. And then following by a very important part of the event, it's the demo. So you will see here next to our uh, stage uh, the machines. So we will run live demo and you will see for the different polymers, the different applications and the different demos. So again, a really warm welcome to this fantastic new event and thank you. Thank you, Fabrizio. My name is Alberto Piovesan, segment manager Plastic Flakes here at Tomra. Today, I'm sitting here with uh, Ida Semp, product manager Plastic Flakes, and Robert Glaser, product expert Flake Sorting Technologies. The launch of our new test center, which is entirely dedicated to Plastic Flakes, is a milestone in our plan to really increase the focus on plastic uh, segment and Plastic Flakes Sorting Technologies. This is part of our plan to make sure we continuously provide the world's best flake sorting solutions to you, our customers, and our partners. The new regulations, as well as uh, the global campaign against plastic, have really been pushing companies, big brands, and even virgin material manufacturers to really need to include more recycled material into their end products. This has spawned a plethora of new applications and some challenges because as we see uh, the growing demand for uh, quality recycled material, there is also a challenge in being able to source quality input material to meet that demand. And there is one more challenge. The final purity requirements keep getting higher. So this is uh, creating a difficult situation for recyclers, having to integrate more technology and more processing into their recycling line. And one of the core technologies to be able to meet these challenges is really flake sorting. This is the last stage after washing and before extrusion where it is possible to remove relatively large amounts of contaminants, whether it is unwanted polymers, different colors, and even metals. And so at Tamra, we have been developing uh, flake sorters for more than 10 years, starting with our Autosor flake machine and different iterations of it in PET. And in 2018, we launched the Inosor flake, which is the most flexible color and polymer sorter on the market today to meet the demand of circular economy and the increased amount of applications that we have to face. And so, speaking about technologies and machines, Ida, what are the different flake sorters in our portfolio and what are the differences between them? Yeah, so thank you, first of all, for the introduction. And as you mentioned, we have two flake sorters in Tamar Recycling, the Autosort Flake and the Innosort Flake. And the Innosort Flake is our, what we call our mid-range flake sorter. It delivers unparalleled sorting performance in fractions with higher contamination levels. It has a modular design with sorting widths of 1, 1.5 or 2 meters and can easily process up to 6 tons per hour in throughput while it's conducting multiple sorting steps to get really the purest possible end product. This, as you said, makes the machine very flexible and can therefore sort a variety of different applications. The Autosort Flake, on the other hand, is 
uh, a machine that we more define as our higher end, higher performance flakes order. And it was specifically developed and built for applications such as PET, bottle to bottle recycling, where the input con contamination is quite low, but the purity requirements are extremely high. It has a combination of sensors, our strongest sensors, that in addition to high precision and high speed valves, really eject the, even the smallest contaminations. And in combination with the recovery track, can ensure that the losses are as small as possible. Very interesting. And speaking about technologies, Robert, what are the technologies that we find in our flake sorters? One of the main technologies is the flying beam technology with continuous signal correction, integrated light source, and enhanced light distribution. And how does this help customers? What does it mean in, in practical terms? In practical terms, the continuous signal correction gives us the possibility to get a stable signal, which results in stable sorting performance, which is very important to the customers because they have lower downtimes and higher uptimes of the machines. Flying beam technology, of course, is a core technology of Tomra and it's a NIR technology. So that's what we use to separate different polymers, even if they are the same color. But we do also have other technologies on our machines. Yeah, for sure. We have own developed high resolution cameras. Um, and with that camera technology, we can perform an outstanding color sorting on our machines. And what about the problem of metals and flakes? We forced that problem with our EM sensors. EM is standing for Electromagnetical Detection Units. And uh, these units are able to detect um, in a high resolution way all kinds of metals. So also non-ferrous metals. Yeah, non-ferrous metals as well. With a high resolution so we can detect small cables, very small flakes, there's no problem. And this is possible also in uh, opaque flakes where a normal camera couldn't yeah, do anything. for sure. That's the advantage of the EM sensor. All of these technologies that are available uh, on our flakes orders, can they be tested at any of our test centers? Or? Yes. We have these technologies in our two machines, mm -hmm. the inner salt flake and the outer salt flake. And um, for all types of applications, post-consumer plastic applications, we can test here in the test center. PE, mm -hmm. PP, and... Um, other types of plastic like ABS or special types of plastic and all the impurities like metal, wood, rubber, etc. Speaking about technologies and the possibility of testing, um, obviously there are new challenges coming to, the, to us from our customers. Uh, what, are, what is the future uh, in your opinion of, of flake sorting and, and flake sorting technologies? Yeah, so that's a big question for sure. But if I may highlight two points, I would say the first one is that there's bigger variation. We see bigger variation in terms of applications, not only PET anymore, but a lot of polyolefins, PS, PVC. In addition, we see different contamination levels. We see different uh, contamination types. And so the requirements for our flake sorters and what they can sort and their flexibility is really increasing. Um, in addition, we see that there's different expectations from the customers as also, as you mentioned, petrochemical companies and bigger brands are taking a bigger part in the recycling process as, as a whole. In addition, we see that uh, data and statistics are getting increasingly important as we need to learn more about our sorting process to make it more efficient, but also we need to know, know more about the material that we're sorting and the end product that we are creating before it goes further to recycling. And so technology is very important today and into the future, and the ability to test this technology is also very important. I would like to pass the ball now to Alessandro Granziera, our country manager, Italy, he can give a testimony of just how important it is for customers to have access to a testing facility in order to make a very well-informed buying decision. Alessandro, over to you.
Thanks Alberto. Uh, first of all, I introduce myself. I'm uh, Alessandro Granziera and I'm Tom, our country manager for Italy. Uh, my colleagues already explained to you how it's important to take sorting in our strategy and how many efforts and resources we are dedicating to deliver the best technology to the market. I will tell you how important it is to test your material and your application. Testing uh, is believing is our motto for this uh, opening event in Parma. Testing is proving is my message to you. You well know that flake sorting is in the last stages of a recycling process and is a crucial one. A good sorting step will make the difference between good product or quality issue. As you can see, we have here our uh, inner sort flake and outer sort flake, fully equipped with uh, all options available. This kind of setup will give the possibility to test any kind of uh, application or material. For instance, PT recovery, PT purifying, PO recovery, PO sorting by type of polymers or type of colors, PS, ABS and PVC, many more. We can also test here flake purifying from metal impurities using an autosol flake with a metal sensor. The main reason why we're inviting you is to give you the best support for your recycling project. For new customers to develop new projects or for existing customers to test new applications. This is not just our test center, this is your playground. Please get in touch with your local sales contact and book a test. We are happy to welcome you here in Parma. Testing is believing, but testing is proving. And now the most exciting part will come. So please enjoy our demo session and thanks for watching. Welcome to Italy. It's really fantastic to see after many, many months, customers and colleagues all together. Why we are here to the opening of the new test center for flakes in Italy here in Parma. Italy is kind of close to my heart because my first sale I made was actually in Italy. I have the great pleasure of announcing this test center for opened. Let the testing begin. Ladies and gentlemen, now the fun part. Let's make some noise. We have selected a number of, uh, of trials here, number of materials, and I think uh, we haven't just chosen some materials that look good on our machines, right? We also have some materials that are actually coming from real customers. Yeah, and we wanted to show you a variety of different applications. So we have actually five different applications from PET, HTP, more P, um, PVC, and yeah. It'll be exciting to see how, how the machines will actually perform. We will start with uh, PT Clear Light Blue. That's a, that's a pretty common application that all of you know very well. But we want to test, in this case, a highly contaminated input material uh, of PT. And so we will do two steps, right, Ida? Yeah, so we will First. start on the Inosur Flake. Yeah, so this is the material that you see. Uh, this is the actual material. It's live from the camera over there. And so it's pretty highly contaminated. Uh, first, Inosaur Flake to reduce drastically the, the big amount, the bulk of the contamination. And then Autosaur Flake to bring it up to bottle to bottle grade uh, PET flakes. Yeah, and then we are, in terms of different contaminations, we are using both in the NIR technology and the color cameras on the Inosaur Flake to remove different colored PET, also other kinds of polymers, as well as metals and opaque material that that the color camera can detect. Two steps for the purification. As you know, in every flake sorting application, there are some losses of material. So we will do two recovery steps, one for the InnoSort to recover that material that was sorted there, and one for the AutoSort flake to reduce the losses. So both machines are capable of doing on inline recovery, even though here we do in different steps. Let's start. Fairly contaminated fraction being PET and here we can see the material being fed in through the infeed hopper and over the over the chute falling down we have some chute covers on the chute they are made of plastic so they avoid rebounds of the flakes well one of the most important things for uh, sorting flakes is that the material has to fall in an orderly fashion and so now filippo you can uh, come to the outer store flake input that material and let's see what comes out of it yeah, and here you very, see, very much see the benefit of having the machines so closely placed yeah. together and it's so easy for a test engineer to just use the buckets to, to take the material from, from one machine or from one sorting step to the next. Autosort Flake, we don't have the same width of, 
of each of the chutes like we have on in Surf Lake. We actually have three wider main chutes, and then we have one smaller chute that is used for recovery sorting. So in a normal setup, you could use either the whole sorting width for running one, one sorting task, or very typically, I would say 95% of our auto surf play customers uses then the recovery track to run a recovery sorting of all the eject that we have, or yeah, the eject and then to recover and reduce the losses from the main product. We are able to have very high heat rates. So heat rate means uh, the capacity to remove a certain contaminant, especially in PVC, which is the most important. We have heat rates of 90% uh, plus, uh, which is, I would say very, very good and, and, uh, and an industry leading number. Okay, so here is the end result. On the right side here, we have the reject and this is the accept material. The reject, again, I have to say it's uh, well concentrated considering the, the low initial uh, contamination. So that's a good sign usually that the machine is, is doing a good job and, and shooting on target. Recovery on, on the InnoSort, that's the material that we're going to recover. So remember, recovery means we put back the eject into the machine and we extract a lot of uh, hopefully highly contaminated uh, reject fraction that we throw away. And then there will be a drop fraction that is hopefully similar to the input material, the original input material. So the contamination must be at or below the input material contamination. So if it's below, over time it helps the overall process because it's reducing the amount of contamination. If it's the same level, well, nothing will happen. Every time we set up the machine, we do it in a way that this material can be reintegrated in line into the, into the product. We run 1,650 1, kilograms per hour. 1,650 per meter. So per meter, that's yeah. That's a 1.2 meter machine. Filippo, you can start the camera, yeah. Uh, Ida, can you tell us why this chute is smaller than all the other chutes? Yeah, so as mentioned earlier, this is the narrow track that we're using only for recovery, as okay. there is not that much material that is initially ejected, but we want to recover as much, as much material as possible of the good PET in this case. So it is really a, a track for, for lowering the losses in the end. Okay. And all of this can work at the same time. In a, in a real yeah. case situation, there would be no pauses between one step and the other. Everything happens at the same time. Of course. And then there's typically piping that will run the recovery, well, the access from the recovery back into the input. And so this runs automatically. This material, that's the reject. It's almost all blue and other, and other polymers. Remember, again, there is a transparent non-PT material here. So on that side, we have the accept that will go back to the input. And that's the first test. We actually have red PE now. We're doing something to make it easier for, for you to visually understand what is happening. So this is yeah post-consumer um, polyolefins. So where the red is the PE, whilst uh, we have then colored some, some PP flakes yellow to visually be able to see them. Okay. And what we are doing then is that we're using in the first step only the color camera yeah. to sort out the yellow contaminants. Yeah, so we're doing the first step with the yellow contaminants. So this is color sorting. So we're using only the color camera. We have disabled the NIR cameras so that we're only using the, the color camera. We have the infeed is on, the color camera is on, the NIR is off. Okay, so this will only be color sorting. We will be rejecting the yellow flakes in the first step. After that, we will put some blue PP flakes and we will use only the NIR camera. So they're blue so you can see the difference, uh, but we will only use the NIR camera. Now everything is getting mixed and ready to start the trial. And yeah, here we have a about 4.8% con contamination level with different, with different colors, but mostly yellow ones. The color cameras that we have, they see 16.8 million colors. So really any color variation is possible to distinguish. Uh, Yellow looks nice against red. It could have been any other color, really. Yeah, we are using yeah, the RGB color spectrum or color space that we call it that can then detect any kind of combination of these three primary colors, which is pretty much the standard technology for, for sorting plastic waste by color. It's, it's not so standard, actually. There are some machines out in the market that have bichromatic cameras. They only see two colors. They see like dogs, basically. They see red and green and they combine those to make up all the other colors. But there are some colors that you, do, you cannot see the difference well, if you have a particular combination. So here we can see each and every color. There it is.
what you also see is a bit different between the machines is that the, as I mentioned, the, there's a modular design on the Indosort, so each module is really closed off. Yeah. And we can also split the chutes so to run recovery on, on only a certain part, certain width of each of the chutes. I said it's the most flexible color and polymer sorter. You can run up to four different sorting tasks on the same machine. So virtually you could be sorting one color on shoot one, a different polymer on shoot two, something else on shoot three, and something even different on shoot four. I don't suggest it, but it can be done. <laughs> so here we have okay. the result. Uh... Yeah, so that's the color sorting part. Where we then good. removed. More or less, well, most of the, of the color contaminants. Yeah. And also you see that it's quite little red P in the eject fraction. And this can, of course, then be, be controlled in the sorting set, setting set up differently if you want a more aggressive shooting. And then you will, you will assume that the, the losses will be bigger, but then you can also run recovery. So we have a lot of blue PP flakes there. We add them to the mix. And then Filippo will switch off the color cameras and only use the NIR technology to sort out the blue PP. Okay. And this is also, yeah, talking about polyolefins, it's, it's very typical that we see a PPPE yeah. uh, mix of, of uh, product. Uh, of course, certain other uh, contaminants as well, but it's really the separation of the polypropylene and the polyethylene that is, that is the key here. So, as I said, the color cameras are off. So this will be 100% flying beam technology, so only the near is working now. This is now a 10% per per uh, contamination of PP that we have added. Yeah, right. and as you see, we are running about 300 kilograms per, per hour per shoot, so... Yeah. You can see from here just how precise the ejector valves are. There is not much overspill of material during sorting, so it's an efficient machine, I would say. All right, so let's have a look what came out of the machine. That's the reject, that's the accept. Of course, some PP flakes here and there, but generally speaking, it's a one-step sorting. I would say a very good result. customer i hope you enjoy the test center uh, launch and this uh, virtual event i really love to be here with you and i hope you like the presentation and the live demo we run together with you i would like to a little bit recap what we have done today so we extend our capability uh, for you and for our, all our customers and our partners to do some more test and application about flex sourcing this will be really the Tomra house for the flakes market and the flake sorting. The test center in Parma will not be used only for Italian customers, but will be globally used. You can run multiple applications and you can work together with us to extend for future applications. On top of this, I really like to get you involved with our sales manager and book soon a new test and come here face to face and meet together with us and really enjoy for the application that you are running and get the benefits out of it. I hope to see you here soon in Parma to really get the feeling and have a demonstration together with us. Goodbye and arrivederci. Thank you. Thank you.